We're here at the Cumberland County Master Gardeners Discovery Gardens, which is located at the University of Tennessee's Plateau Research and Education Center. We're starting a compost pile here, and I'm Mary Wortham, the intern, and I'd like to tell you more about composting. Our pile here is just beginning, and we have been using three 4x4x4 four by four by four piles, and we use 4x4x4 four by four by four bins because we're a large operation here, but in your own home backyard, you may want to use a smaller one. It's preferable to use a 3x3x3 three by three by three bin because you need the size to decompose all your material. We have another bin here on the property that we can talk about later that's smaller and can be purchased at any local home and garden store. The idea behind the three bins here is that we can collect our composting here, let it decompose halfway here, and once it's again decomposed more, we can collect it in our third bin where it's been ready to use and we can go ahead and use it as mulch or composting to help our soil. However, at your own home, you don't need three bins. You can use just one three by three bin and make sure that you turn your pile frequently as to aerate. Here, the rotating of the piles acts as our aeration also, so you don't need so many turns. When you compost, you're going to want to have at least three to one, three, brown, three parts brown to every part green. When I say three parts brown, the brown represents the carbon that you need in the soil. Browns, when we say browns, we talk about dead leaves, twigs, anything from sawdust to hay to straw. And in the summer like this, it's hard to collect browns because of everything's green but you can use straw and hay and sawdust or you can make sure that you find some browns to add because the browns are very important. The greens, however, our yard trimmings, fresh yards trimming, anything that's wet and green, you can use as greens and that acts as the nitrogen in the composting. And that's really important, but if you have too much green, your pile is going to be a little stinky and nobody wants a stinky pile because that's not very good. But also, greens like manure, things that you don't think are green, can be green, as in the manure, anything wet is green, and green's good, but it's not as good as browns and composting. Also, you want to make sure that your composting is wet, because you need water in your composting just as much as you need anything else. If there's no water, there's not enough for the microorganisms in the compost to decompose everything you've added here. Also, you need air, because air is Oxygen is a big part of the microorganisms breaking down what you put into your composting. When you add everything in there, the microorganisms eat it all up and it's going to get really hot. And that's when you have to turn it because you, they take up all the air that's in the soil and you want them to go back and you want to replenish their supply of air. Now once you're done with composting, you want to know what it looks like. And you want to make sure it's good because here, before you can turn, or before you know it's good, you want this pile to be about half the size that it is now before we can put it in this pile. And it's going to do the same yet again. It's going to go to half the size before we can replace it in this pile. And I'm going to show you what it's supposed to look like. Since we're just beginning here, we haven't gotten any usable compost yet. But if you walk over here, you can see what it will probably look like in about two months' time. You can see that it's going to have about the consistency of any kind of mulch that you want. You know, you want the small, all the big particles to be broken down into where you can just run it through your hands and you're not going to catch anything too big. Earlier I mentioned how you can use a compost bin that you can buy at any home and garden store. And in the gardens here, in our raised bed, we actually have an example of this. And this bin is about three by three by three, which I mentioned is as small as you can want to go. And this bin is good for your home. However, we found that this bin has a few problems, as in it's hard to turn this compost once you have it in. Now, it does have a smaller door at the bottom that you can reach out and get what's already composted, but it still doesn't make it any easier to turn. And right next to us here, we have a straw bed, and it's completely filled with compost. And you can see everything in here is doing wonderfully. You can see how the compost is just like, there's no fertilizer or anything in here. You can just see that it's, it acts as your own fertilizer. And these tomato plants are just huge right now. And I can tell you, at the beginning of the summer, 
they weren't even here and they just came out of nowhere and now they're huge. What's great about composting is you, it cuts back on your fertilizer, it improves your soil, and it's free. You dump and you dump and you dump and you turn and you turn and you turn and you get free soil at the end of all that. And here you have such wonderful plants that come from it. It's all organic, it's natural, it's easy, it's cheap, and you're good. Once again, I'm Mary Wortham here at the Cumberland County Master Gardeners Discovery Gardens, and thank you, and good night. <laughs>